Alright, I'm gonna try my best to make this one quick. So this is a tutorial about deforming meshes with Blender's Curves and the Curve Modifier. This tutorial is directed at people who use Miku Miku Dance and PMX Editor. And in that sort of subset of people that this tutorial is directed at is at people who mostly use Meta Sequoia to deform hair meshes. Curves, I think, is a great alternative to Meta's Blend Tool. Not Blend... Meta's Ben tool, mostly because I find the Ben tool a bit limited. It only really just bends stuff, and I um, think the deformation looks kind of weird. I mean, there are people I know who use that tool and can make edits look amazing. It's just personally, I couldn't get it to look right. It just didn't work for me. So this is a great alternative to anyone who wants, like, it's a different method of editing hair, like maybe... You use the Ben tool and maybe you just want to learn a tool for like future reference. Whatever your purpose is, I hope that this tutorial can help you. So let's just jump in. Three things you'll need. Blender, obviously. Two, you need the mesh that you're going to edit. Personally, I'm using just a default Tiramiku twin tail, although this will work for any sort of uh, mesh like YYB, Sour, Animasa, Kuroyu. Those are the only four I can name off the top of my head, but as long as you follow everything here, then it should work. Also, if you plan to edit bangs, I highly, 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 highly suggest that you separate each part of the bangs um, into separate objects. Because if you apply a curve to the entire like set of bangs, then the whole then the curve is just gonna deform all of the bang, and that just it's gonna look weird, trust me. So just make sure to separate each part of the bangs, like I said. If I find a tutorial on how to do so, like in PMXC or better yet in Blender, I'll link that down below. And finally, you need PowerOP's MMD Tools plugin. What does this plugin allow you to do? It allows you to import PMX data or models. Uh, it allows you to import motions, poses, all that good shit. Um, this is pretty much essential for this tutorial because it keeps all the weight data, all the bones, all the physics, all the joints. It lets you import it, mess with it, then import it back into PMX because I'm pretty sure, from my memory, when you'd import PMX data into Meta, it wouldn't save any of that. It would completely wipe it and you'd have to go back into PMXC and re-rig everything and PMX is like weight painting. It's just not that intuitive. So this is a great plugin. This is, it's pretty essential. You need this. So if you don't have any of those three things or you're missing one or two of those things, pause this tutorial, go get them and then come back. You've got those three things, cool, proceed. So number one, I'm going to press one. Now, uh, you'll notice it says numpad one. So your numpad, um, I'll just flash it up on screen real quick. That's that bitch. If you don't have it, you can just go to edit, preferences, input, then check this box, emulate numpad, make sure to save preferences, then exit. And when you just press regular one by the tilde, it'll work like a numpad. So now what you want to do is you want to press N. This brings up the properties panel. What does the properties panel do? I'm not entirely sure. It just brings up all of this, all of this stuff. And when you open Blender, it's gonna automatically be on tool. And you wanna find the MMD tab when you've installed the MMD tools add-on. And this is it. So model, motion, pose, you can like convert something you made in Blender to PMX format. So in model, import, and you want to navigate to wherever you have your uh, hair PMX saved. So mine is twintail.pmx. I also I suggest saving the hair in a different like PMX file so you don't mess anything up. And you select it, you click import, and this will pop up. So this is the mesh. These are the bones, and this right here is this is technically called like a plain axis. Uh, empty it acts as the mother bone and if you delete it you can't export the model so keep this it's important all right once you've got that imported you want to uh, go back into orthographic mode now shift a is to add something and you go to curve 
bezier. Make sure it's a bezier. Don't click the regular NURBS path. If you click the NURBS path, it's not going to work, for this method at least. And you'll notice that this is curved. Well, you don't really want it to be curved like that, so you go into tab. Make, press A to make sure everything is selected. Then V, so that brings up the handle type. V for automatic, so it straightens it out. And then V, L. So now those uh, red handles are back. I believe this is like the vector uh, thing. And one more thing. Notice these. These little arrow things. I don't know what the technical term is. I call them caterpillar legs. So notice where the caterpillar legs are pointing. And notice where they're pointing away from. Now this depends on how like you added the curve. It should be like this. Just keep this in mind. I'll explain why this is important later. So now you go back into object mode. One. Now what you're going to do. Press S. Then drag. And that scales it. Basically you want to fit this curve along like the direction of where the hair is like falling. Like this way. Make sure it just make sure it's completely straight. Because if you edit the like the handles of the curve, then the hair is gonna deform weird. You want the hair to stay like normal when you apply the curve modifier. You don't want it to be deformed already, so that's why we're straightening the curve. So once you get it scaled, you're gonna press R, Y, and then negative ninety. Like right. I mean, it was up there. Now what you're going to do is you're going to press G, Z. G is the move tool and Z is to like exclusively move it along the Z axis. And then I'm going to scale it just a snitch more. Then G, Z, G, X to move it along the X axis. Yeah, I'm going to move it more and maybe scale it down a smidge. R, Y again. G, X one more time. G, Z. Then R, Y again. That looks okay. Then three on the numpad for right orthographic, then G, Y. And then Rx. And hold on. Hold on a sec. And then tab into edit mode. Okay, I'm gonna scale it just a smidge more. Mm. Not too much. That should be fine. So now that you've got the curve fit to the general like direction of where the hair is going, so like in this line, I keep like taking my hand off the mouse and like touching the screen even though you can't see my hands. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that. So now what you want to do is remember, remember these little legs here. Notice they're pointing to the top. They're pointing away from the bottom. You want to select the bottom one here. A lot of curve tutorials will tell you, oh, select the where these legs are pointing and then set this bad boy, the 3D cursor, there. For me, if I set the 3D cursor, this, this little guy, at the top, then the mesh just, it's in a completely different um, location, like from where it's supposed to be. Like it, like the hair mesh is like all the way down here or something, and it just doesn't look right to me. So what works for me is setting the 3D cursor at this point right here, where the legs are pointing away from. And so select this, curve, snap, cursor to selected, then tab back into object mode. Object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. So now you want to do the same for the hair. So select the hair mesh, still in object mode, object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. And now here's the fun part. You want to go to this wrench here. This is where your modifiers are. Add modifier. 
deform curve and then you can either like select the curve in the drop down list or you can use this eyedropper here and it works so if you did this properly it should only deform a little bit oh it's not even deforming at the top at all sweet so it might deform just a little bit at the top here it's not that bad it's working so now if i select the curve tab into edit mode press g to move it moves the curve so obviously it moves the whole mesh too much so what you can do is press a right click subdivide and you can subdivide as much as you want so this is a really insane subdivision it only forms that little bit it's just kind of annoying but oh well but yeah this is like if you really want to get specific so for me personally i'm not going to have this many subdivisions i'm going to have about that much or maybe not even that much i'm just so personally I would stick with one subdivision to just get the base of your shape set. So now let's get into editing. You want to sort of taper your curve. So Alt S and then zoom in right there. That's fine. Maybe just a little. Just a tad. That's all right. And maybe you want to fatten this. You can also use the radius tool be careful with it because it can go like whoa and you don't want that so just a little bit just a tad but you could also do alt s and then scale that way and i'm just gonna do this and then maybe that and then g to sort of move it if you want to this up maybe maybe just I'm just getting a general shape how you want to do this it depends on like what you're going for this is just a sort of example and maybe you want a little bit of a curl well you could just press control T and curl it like so just a little bit maybe like this and if you want a little more control like I said so this would be like maybe our base shape you can subdivide and that didn't do anything we kind of just destroy our shape a little bit oops so maybe this sort of shape here you can always just press tilt here too like right below radius uh, if you wanted something a little stronger ish I don't know say maybe you want like this is it you're done calling it a day so now what do you do well you go back into object mode select the hair mesh apply oh wait before you do that if your mesh has a shape key you gotta delete it if you select this bad boy right here the little triangle with the three dots shape keys basis delete and then apply apply the modifier once this is deleted you can always add it back now we can delete the curve so i just did that by selecting the curve then deleting it and then you can export so, tutorial, export, and then export PMX. And now, when we go to the folder, double click on tutorial export and wait for it to load up in PMX editor. There it is, there's our deformed mesh. When it exported, it exported all the bones. If you go down here to mode, wait, and select the head bone or any bone that you might have had, it saved all the weight data. So if you um, imported hair with bones, 
when you deform the mesh and like apply the modifier, I suggest moving the bones because they're not going to move with the mesh. I don't think I, there might be a way to deform bones with the curve. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I'll do some further research on that. And if there is, I'll update this video like with a little mini update. The bones will likely be in a completely different location. So you'll have to move the bones like back, like in their spots. And if there's any weight paint errors, just a bit. You can always edit those in Blender. It's not too difficult. So yeah, that's that's basically the tutorial. And before I go, I want to mention a few things. So there may be people way more experienced with Blender than I am. And you may be asking, hey, you scaled that curve in object mode and you didn't apply any of the transformations. Why is that? Oh shit, I just closed the project file. I'm just going to open this one because luckily I had one saved. So what would happen is if I went here and then control A, all transforms. Well, look at this bullshit. You don't want that to happen. That looks like some weird modern art piece. It doesn't look like hair. So that's why I didn't apply any of the transformations because it just fucked up really badly. I'm not sure how I could like apply those transformations and not have it fuck up. But if you're scaling at object mode, don't apply the transformations. Let me just show you what would happen if I went here, selected the top point here where the legs are pointing, and then curve, snap, cursor to selected, and then object, set origin, origin and 3D cursor. See? Now it's all the way down here. And you're probably asking, well, you didn't even change the origin point of the uh, hair. And when I do, doesn't do shit. Nothing happens. So that's why the origin and the 3D cursor are all the way down here at the opposite of where the legs are pointing, like I've been mentioning. So that's it. Um, if you have any questions, any problems, um, just let me know. You can always also hit me up on my other socials that I have in the description. I can try and walk you through how you can fix it. You can always send me like the project file and I can see what's going on. If you have any tutorial suggestions, let me know. And that's basically it. Bye.